Hello, this is one of the latest LEGO Harry Potter sets. It's the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower. In addition to the main structure, which is built in three separatable sections, this set comes with eight minifigures, Hedwig, and a very small side build. Let me give this a quick spin around so you can get an idea for the shape and overall size of the build, how it's put together. The main tower is open around one side as well as the back. Normally you expect these things just to be open around the back. That has good things about it and bad as well. The center section is open around the back, very easy to get into there. And then you have the small greenhouse off to the side. I really enjoyed putting this section together because, well, it just felt like a good building experience. And I also really like how the colors go together. It has not too much of the sand green, but they don't rely on only the sand green. They also have the olive color used for some of the bits down at the base and a couple up on the roof as well. The tan color for the stickers does not match. The background color does not match the plastic perfectly. But fortunately, this is intended to represent wear, so they actually get away with it. In this case, it doesn't look so bad. And uh, all the foliage in this set is bright green, not regular green, so it has a whole lot of extra pop. This just felt nice to put together and looks good in my opinion. The greenhouse is small, but it has some nice pop to it. They use the dark orange color for this with just some smaller accents or fill-ins of the nougat color, which is the same as what you see used on the wall and some of the other accent colors for bricks and such. Again, with the use of the bright green here, they also have lime green used behind there. This roof is not even properly attached. It's just sat on there. They use a couple of Ninjago dragon hilt elements for decorations there. This lets you get access from the top, but honestly, most access to this for us is just gonna be around the back. Now to make this even easier for you to look at, I'm just gonna pull this straight off from one of the connection points. So this is just really easy to get to, really simple. And they just have four mandrakes that are potted in there. Each one of these, I am pleased to report, let me just uh, go ahead and throw that out. There we go, see, each one is printed. They are cylinder pieces here, but they look pretty cool. Since I pulled one section apart, let me go ahead and pull another part again for easier access and just looking at it by itself. And this is the potions classroom, or at least a slice of it, with less than four studs of depth that minifigures can really access. Uh, the door is nice with the dark brown and the brown inset in it. Uh, you got the chandelier above with some candles of different lengths. Two tables, one on either side with different builds for a uh, cauldron and some some flasks and potion containers, small seat. It's pretty close to the ground, but that works out pretty well, I think. At least for many figures that are able to bend their legs and they use different colors on, on the two sides. Interestingly, that blue one there is actually a print. It's not a new print, but it's a very nice one. I was surprised and happy to see. It looks like a mayfly or some other similar insect. Also to go with this room is a book and this uses stickers for its decoration. This is an advanced potion making book and they just don't show you exactly what's inside. The astronomy tower by itself is very narrow and tall. In other words, very tower-like. This has the arched entryway with again, just a little bit of the sand green and olive green used at the base. Just, you know, little, little tidbits of, of change is nice. And a little bit of foliage, a couple of spikes there. And as we go up, you'll see an alternation between reliance upon changes of color and changes of actual texture, physical texture, and stickers to represent the wear patterns and to make it look like it's not just a plain tan thing. Because if it was just plain tan, well, that would be pretty boring. Uh, you got the observation port there. Uh, it's nice that this was actually built, this detail that could have been done with just a sticker uh, on a couple of parts, a couple of these pieces here, these bowed, uh, uh, corner parts, but uh, I appreciate that that was actually built up. This little bit of roof is so narrow, just two studs. And as you go all the way up, they do complete the spikes as viewed from the front and the sides, but the whole thing is cut off in the back. So looking at the main spire there, that's actually fully open. And one of the telescopes is sticking way out. That's actually a nice little build though, with the gem lenses that are used there. You got a scroll that's open showing some astrological signs. It's a very nice build for a scroll. It just looks proper. The astrolabe here is just a really nice looking thing. Uh, it's also able to rotate around. That's, that's nice. I think you might be able to get that angle just a little bit better 
make it look a little bit more impressive as it spins a little bit more smooth. That is a Technic piece in the center that is a printed piece or drum lacquered piece rather. It's a, a nice bright silver color. You just have an open space over here. No stud unfortunately to hold on to the foot of a minifigure. Would have been nice to be able to fit one in a little bit better. This is a Ravenclaw dorm room. I think that Ravenclaw has not gotten enough respect in this series. It's nice to see something dedicated to them even if it is just a portion of a small floor. This has on the side a bookshelf and I'll show you what's in that bookshelf. That stuff can come out. Got a quill there and a letter being written and two beds. In the bookcase was this fictional issue of the Daily Prophet that's an existing printed piece. And this bright green book represents an earlier edition of Unfogging the Future with its cover. And then they have a uh, sticker used for the interior which is exactly the same as the other book but it doesn't really matter because you couldn't read it at this size anyway. The next level down is Professor Slughorn's office, uh, such as it is, or at least a bit of it. I mean, in the movie, his office is large and lavish and plush. So you're really just getting his desk and a couple of uh, small bookshelves behind there with books represented with stickers, which totally makes sense for the small amount of space that's available here. And that's his lamp with the, the two bulbs on it. And there's a letter off to the side. And he just has a seat and that's just it. I mean, there's not that much space to really create anything lavish here. So they used every bit that they could while still allowing at least one figure to just barely stand there uh, on the studded surface that is available. Finally, all the way down at the base, there's just a spot for a broom. And then off to the side, this is a decoration from the slug party. And that's nice. You know, it represents a couple of paper lanterns hung kind of on a, on a tree. Yeah, you can change the angles of these. You want to bring them together? Yeah, it's fine. And then speaking of the party, here's something to go with that. A table with a bunch of pastries and some glasses and the chocolate fountain. This looks very delightful. Looks very uh, appetizing as long as you don't recognize the fact that these pieces in brown, the little swirls, were originally first released by Lego as representations of dog poo. The set probably does the best yet in this Hogwarts series of giving you options for how to connect things. The greenhouse, well, you can connect from this end or you can connect from this end, but if you simply rotate these one by one bricks, then you get some additional options there. Uh, you don't really have that many options here, you know, just two standardized places to connect things. And these pins, of course, can be moved around, but, uh, you know, they don't, they don't give you any uh, options for changing angles here. However, on the main tower, now this is good because these are off to the side, but then you have these as well as a completely different angle, 90 degrees away where you can attach things. And these are all intended to be swapped around as you want. You don't have to put them together in a specific official way. So you can make things look better than Lego even suggests. And again, over here, they give you two options built right in without any customization required. I don't, I don't yet have all of the latest uh, versions of these kind of modular buildings to put together, but once I do have them built, uh, then I will show you what they all look like together. We have a lot of minifigures to look at. Each of these Hogwarts-based sets tries to focus on a specific film, and this one is coming from the Half-Blood Prince. Harry Potter himself is probably the best character to follow to really see the age progression across these figures as we go from year to year. But between these two, Hermione is the more impressive figure to me with really crisp, well done printing. Also dual molded legs there, which helps a lot, but just the opacity of the printing is good. The edges are good and there's a little bit of metallic print as well for the necklace there, as well as for her shoes. There's a little bit of wear around the edges there, but that's just from transportation and such. They each get their different colors of wands. And here's a look around the back. Each of these also has an alternate face, which is important, although the difference for Harry is not that significant here. You know, it's just a little bit of extra concern here. Not a dramatic difference compared to this. Here I've paired up Ron Weasley with Lavender Brown. And Lavender's hair is interesting to me because I don't think I've seen that hair piece in that color before. It's a rubbery piece, which is why it's not shiny. And it's medium nougat colored here. Just, uh, it's, it's interesting because it's different to me. Uh, kind of stands out in that way. Her prints are very good, very strong. 
Uh, Ron's print for his torso is pretty good, but the white there is a little bit lacking. Uh, I think it looks fine for a, a fabric texture, but it was intended, I believe, to be brighter white than that. But I personally just don't mind it, just pointing out just for the sake of consistency. And each of these does have an alternate face. A little bit more difficult to take Lavender's hair off because it is uh, extra grippy with that rubbery texture. And there's just a better look at those faces without the hair pieces. Here we get Luna Lovegood and Draco Malfoy. Boo hiss. Draco's face has a little bit of a misprint on it, on that one eye. Otherwise, both of these are printed up very, very well. I think that Draco's Slytherin robes here look fantastic. A little bit of green that is subtle enough, but it's strong enough at the same time. The vest is good. The white print on top of black is not bad at all. And looking over at Luna again, dual molded legs once again works out well. The alignments of the prints works out well. Uh, yeah, just two very strong figures. Too bad about the tiny bit of, of mistake in there. Just production stuff. But both of them have alternate faces which are distinctly different and pretty cool. Finally, here are Professor Slughorn on the left. And that's Neville Longbottom on the right with his waiter slash server outfit for the slug party. Both of these look pretty good to me, especially with the prints for the torsos and especially for the professor over here. It's looking pretty fancy. Appropriately so. Look at the, the metallic print in there. That's pretty cool. I think that the face looks pretty appropriate for him. Uh, Neville is, is not bad, but it's not perfect. Let me just move that platter out of the way so you can see the print on the torso a little bit better. Print on the torso a little bit better. Print on the torso a little bit better. It's nice to see these hair pieces, you know, just different hairs than we usually see from Lego, I think is, is just nice. Maybe that's just me, but I, I get impressed by variety of any sort. And the prints on the backs of the torsos look fine. The alternate faces are good and different enough and appropriate. Last but not least, here's Hedwig with wings spread. And this is a nice mold. Single piece of plastic, of course, just with a print on it. But it looks pretty nice. I uh, like the, the shaping. You know, it's fairly complex. It's not too flat the way they did the wings. Some extra compounding in there. And yeah, it just looks nice. And they don't have any sharp edges because of the way that they did it. So yeah, I think it's just generally a good design. And it still perches just fine. Here are the leftover spare parts. And there is plenty of good stuff in there to make the custom builder in me very happy. And looking forward to using uh, some of the variety that's here because it's stuff that you just don't see that frequently in mold as well as color. And finally, this is the spent sticker sheet. So you can just get an idea of how many stickers are used overall. Most of those are tan backed ones. Well, I mean, it's all technically white backed, but most of them are tan in the background to use as little suggestions of texture. So value, anybody? Should we talk about value? Let's talk about value. The set costs $100 US and it comes with a little less than 1,000 pieces. Might as well round it up. It's close enough, 2,000 pieces to uh, say that the price to, parts, <laughs> price to part ratio looks pretty darn good on this, especially considering the number of minifigs and the fact that uh, there's a fair number of, of larger pieces included in this and some relatively specialized ones. These window frames are extra large. Got some large uh, plates used for it. This is big. I mean, yeah, I think I think the value on paper looks pretty good. Personally, when I look at this, just okay, let's forget about being professional about it. Just personal opinion, 100%. I don't quite feel myself, without thinking about it, $100 worth of value here when I first look at this. And because of that, because of this set in particular, I'm really starting to feel like I need to adjust my own personal barometer, my own personal gauge of, of value because I do feel like this is a good use. You know, I built this thing up not too long ago. It's still, the build is still very close with me. I do feel like this is a good use of upwards of a thousand pieces. And it doesn't have a ton of tiny little pieces. It has a fair number of larger pieces. So it stands to reason 
that I should be concluding that the value here is respectable. So yeah, I think I need to adjust my view a little bit. I should be telling you right now, I believe uh, with, with reason, with logic, that the value here is pretty good. But I will still share with you freely that my first impression, just that the spidey sense, is it? What is it? A little bit of just, you know, intuition. Something just tells me I wish it was a little bit cheaper for what it's worth. I know I say that a lot. Yeah, it's because Lego's really expensive. And I do recognize that Lego's really expensive, but even at that, still pieces of plastic. The fact that this is open on the side makes it so much more convenient to get in there, but makes it so much less convenient to display because this looks pretty good as I rotate it around this way, even though it is cut off completely on the back. And even though this little section here is not very deep, this looks pretty darn good on display. I like the shaping of it and I like the colors to be sure. But as you turn it around this way, it looks like the back of a typical Lego set, except with more depth. You know, usually Lego buildings will be maybe four studs deep or something like that. But you know, you, you get what I mean. It's, it's so open, it's so obvious. Uh, so the ideal compromise there would have been to have a flap here that could open up. Probably just going through these three layers here at least. I think probably would have been enough. And people can always customize a little something up here. I'm okay with them not covering all this, but at least down here, I think a flap that opens up would have been nice. Would have added a lot of pieces though, or they would have had to remove detail from other things. Uh, it is good that you have that access though. For those small spaces, it is, spaces, it is good at, that you have that access for your fingers to get in there from two sides. It's much better than not having that available to be opened or to simply be opened by default. Uh, I really like the details. Most of the details here are really good. Um, yeah, no complaints there. Again, the color scheme, the uh, the stickers I think are good. The figures in general I think are good. This is really nice for a small side build. And again, I appreciate the ability to connect things in more than just one way. They really give you a lot of good options there. And I'll, I'll be able to, to show you that, you know, some of the, the possibilities once I do get the rest of these sets from this release series built up. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this thing. Um, size is good. Build was enjoyable. Value I need to work on. Calculating for myself. I don't think it's bad. Just don't think it's great. That might just be me. Let me know what you think. If you want to see how the whole thing went together, as usual, I've got the real-time build up, got the speed build up, and I will continue working to bring you as much content as I can, as quickly as I can. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.